Thanks to two years of insane policies by almost all Western governments, we're poorer, we're sicker, our children are damaged, serious times and serious times demand serious politicians. Hi, I'm Victor Klein, I'm leader of TNL, and we have a policy for net zero emissions by 2030 to stop the rising waters. If we wait another 20 or 30 years like Liberal, Labor and the Independent want, we'll be in deep water. So if you live in the federal seat of North Sydney and you care about real action on climate change, vote one, Victor Klein. Before it's... There's never a great white shark around when you need one. And they'd appreciate a guy in a suit and tie after years of making do with Bondi surfer dudes in Speedos. But the message is clear. Unless you're over six foot seven, you're going to drown, probably before election day. Well, he's just some bloke in North Sydney. What does the deputy leader of the free world have to say about all this? It's especially true when it comes to the climate crisis which is why we will work together and continue to work together to address these issues, to tackle these challenges, and to work together as we continue to work operating from the new norms, rules, and agreements that we will convene to work together on to galvanize global action. With that, I thank you all. This is a matter of urgent priority for all of us. And I know we will work on this together. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, if I understand, we will not only work together, but we will continue to work together, lest you thought we were going to cease working together in order to go out and get a decaf latte and a cranberry muffin. No, no, no. Don't ever doubt our commitment to working together to address these issues, to tackle these challenges, to address these challenges, tackle these issues, challenge these issues, issue these addresses in which we tackle the issue of challenging all of us to work together, to continue to work together, to work to continue together, to tackle together the work of working together. You know, the more Kamala Harris talks about working together, the more you get the vague feeling she's not doing any work at all. Politics is very boring to healthy, well-adjusted people, but sometimes politicians screw up so much of the planet that it starts to impact very basic aspects of life. For example, the United States has a baby formula shortage. By the time they're there, yeah, 43% of it, shortage of 43% of baby formula. By the time they're six months old, three out of four American babies are on formula milk. We keep hearing, we keep hearing about these millions and millions of pregnant men with their six pack abs full of tasty, nutritious milk. Yet all these lactating men refuse to step forward. Gee, it's almost like all our modish obsessions have no real world meaning. Another headline, India, second largest wheat producer bans exports amid food supply concerns. Global wheat prices have increased by more than 40% since the beginning of the year. You don't say. I wonder why that would be. India is the second largest wheat producer. China is the first, so that's all sprinkled with the Omicron. Uh, the third largest wheat producer is, uh, let me see, Russia. Gee, I hope now that India's out of the export business, that nice fella in the Kremlin will see about increasing wheat exports to Europe. In the modern world, we mostly use Marie Antoinette's apocryphal line, let them eat cake in a metaphorical sense. It's about to get very literal. Another headline, California is in a water crisis, yet usage is way up. Hmm. Uh, yeah, the state's population has doubled since 1970, but it hasn't built a dam since the 1960s. Gee, it's almost like all this virtue signaling can have real-world consequences. Not to worry, 
No bread, no water. All this shows is that we need to work together to tackle the challenges of working together. Our leaders are making major investments in organic gruel washed down with a nice E. coli colada. And I haven't even mentioned the most obvious indictment of our wretched political class, a headline so obvious we never read it in any paper. While all the smart people are worrying about a six-foot rise in sea levels at Bondi Beach, the real story is excess mortality. All deaths, not COVID. This is Australia. Take a look at this. This is a country that's been cut off from the world for two years. And yet at the end of January, see that big spike up in the top right corner, the line about to disappear out of the top of the piece of paper and into the stratosphere. That's 26 percent excess mortality. Australia, after two years of being locked down from the world, 26 percent excess mortality. I'll come back to that. Fortunately, at a time when our politicians are failing us, ordinary individuals are stepping forward to do their part. This is, of course, Bill Gates, the founder of MuboSoft, uh, America's wet nurse, as I like to think of him. He can solve the baby milk shortage single-handedly or even single-breastedly. I haven't glimpsed knockers that impressive since a lesbian prison movie on a bootleg video at a stag night in 1978. Terrific. This is the world our rulers have made, a world in which supply chains are so disrupted that the world's fourth richest man can't find a polo shirt that doesn't hug his curves like Liz Hurley in that safety pin dress. What, what was that? Oh, sorry, my mistake. It turns out that Bill Gates isn't going to solve America's baby milk crisis. Instead, he's going to make the last two years permanent by backing the new World Health Organization Pandemic Treaty. Here he is with the WHO's Dr. Tedros. Let's take a look at this power couple. Gee, it's almost like his giant man boobs are just there to distract us from the fact that he's buying up our democracy. I think I prefer Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum. He's Ming the Merciless. Uh, whereas Bill Gates is Moob the Merciless. You're poorer, you're sicker, you can't see a doctor, everything's more expensive and in shorter supply because the West's political class is determined to double down on the last two years.